Overcoming Test Skepticism. This is um, a One School for All lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, uh, for my wonderful international students that I would like you to watch before we next meet on the 14th of September 2021. So um, you've almost certainly heard um, that a lot of teachers are skeptical to tests. And it certainly is true to say that tests do take a lot of time and um, um, and tests don't necessarily um, contribute to learning and teachers won't want their student will want their students to learn um, so um, so it's in some ways praiseworthy they do have a function though so we're going to go through three of these um, and then describe um, what the what the problem is and why it's complicated so the first one is um, what if what if the, these tests are going for pseudoscience and we're talking particularly about um, screening tests, which is to say um, the kind of tests that identify reasons why pupils might not learn in the future. And famously, the um, friend of uh, NCE, um, wonderful um, late Ken Robinson, Sir Ken Robinson, talked about why ADHD um, is not an epidemic. It can't be an epidemic in the sense of you can't catch ADHD and you can notice how um, ADHD can be plotted in geographically and, and, and the way it actually spreads in, in, in ways that resemble corona and, and why should that be? Um, there's something that must be wrong there um, and similarly Derek Muller, altogether more difficult to see, um, um, debunks the idea of learning style, styles. Why would you um, map your class to find out what learning styles your pupils have when it turns out learning styles don't exist. So these are strong um, challenges to the, um, the science which is developed on the basis of screening. And we need to take them seriously. Um, but this is science which has been done. Um, people haven't just um, assumed that HDA, uh, ADHD exists or ADD exists. Um, there have been statistical double-blind um, tests in order to find out how many people have it and what are the signs and if they really are signs. Um, and we do have statistical tests for this. And if you want to challenge those tests, you're very welcome to do that. But you've got to do that by challenging the science, the statistics behind those tests. Why is it such? that certain people demonstrate particular signs um, and, and these clusters of symptoms, um, if it's not actually a thing, why, why, why do they coincidentally work in particular ways? And so we're going to have to address science um, and you can't just throw them out and say it's pseudoscience unless you have challenged um, the, the statistical observations. And, um, and Doubtless, they are then used in school contexts in ways which can absolute gener absolutely generate suspicion. And I think Sir Ken Robinson is right to be suspicious of the way ADHD works in, in the USA. Um, but, but if you were going to I don't, um, say that the thing itself doesn't exist, then you're just going to have to look at the statistical tests that have been done, which generated that, that um, phenomenon in the first place, generated the identification in the first place before we then administered those te tests in ways that doubtless are difficult to do because it is difficult to administer tests in a good way to an entire population. And we have tried to challenge those, um, that science, and it turns out at the moment it looks like ADHD or ADD does exist. Learning styles don't. Secondly, why not just loosen the link between human rights and knowledge? Why do we need to know people um, uh, for who they are? Why this scientific need for knowledge? Why not say human rights are one thing and, um, and science about the human, human being is another thing? And if somebody wants some kind of, somebody needs some kind of help in the school, why don't they just ask for it? Um, and instead of saying we need to check, we need, we're not sure whether you actually need it or not, why not say, well, people have a right to something, so if they need it, then they should ask for it, and then they should get it. And that's a brilliant way of, finance, of, of financing special needs education rather than going through a really long rigmarole of testing. The problem is that we don't, even, we don't always know 
what we should be asking for unless we have spoken to an expert who says this is what the problem that you're struggling with and this is what will solve it so we do need the science in order to um to ask for something you can't you don't just know um wh when you are, when you are struggling to watch tv for example what kind of glasses you need you need to go to somebody who will tell you what kind of glasses that means um and and, and that means we don't always know what we want which means human rights are attached to this knowledge whether we like it or not it also means that the pursuit of happiness and the pursuit of self-fulfillment is linked to self-knowledge um, which itself is is asymmetrically distributed not everybody has access to somebody who can uh, who can set these diagnoses or somebody who can talk through my problems with me uh, not, not everyone has the leisure time to to ask those questions the third one um, is um, maybe school as such is a problem. And I'm going to ask this handsome young man to explain it to us. The third reason for skepticism is that the school was the bad project in the first place, along with prisons and ways of confining people um, and defining people and using institutions to tell us who we are instead of allowing us to explore that as humans ourselves. Schools define by testing and screening. The problem is a bigger one. It's our society, it's our testing society, and schools are part of that, so we should just abandon the whole school project. We are against schools. We need to get past schools, just like the one behind me. And therefore, we should stop testing people, um, because that's just what schools do, and they do it in order to create a particular kind of population. I have a great deal of sympathy for that kind of criticism, and we'll find it in the literature of Stephen Ball, for example, who's an excellent uh, critical thinker. What I worry about in terms of schooling, though, here, is that if we're going to get rid of testing in schools, then we're also going to have to ask some difficult questions about testing in societies. If we're going to have societies which are not just made for one particular kind of people, then we need to find what people need. We need to work together to live together so that people in our society can live with the rights that they have, given in particular proportion, according to the needs. So maybe we need a testing society after all. Otherwise, we're going to have to just abandon the whole idea of human rights in society. Thank you very much. So if we take away school testing, uh, what are we going to do with society itself? This does seem to be something where they are enmeshed in each other and, and people need to be somewhere whilst we're finding out um, what kind of um, special um, needs people have for society. And special needs education is deeply enmeshed in special needs in society. So there are three problems. There are three challenges um, that we want to know. Is the science well, find, well founded? Um, is it really necessary to know as much as we seem to want to know um, for our systems at the moment? And are these institutions, are these, is this bureaucratic way of governing society actually quashing our freedom? Shouldn't we um, be ourselves by expressing ourselves rather than being told who we are by scientific tests? These are really difficult questions, um, and I think we need to take them all seriously. But I don't think um, we should just assume that once we've posed those questions, the um, the discussion is over as to whether there should be special needs education testing and screening or not. We need to take them seriously, but we don't need. Uh, but we mustn't think that we've answered them already. We have to remember the biggest challenge to knowledge knowledge is not when we don't know, but when we think we do.